under their spell, so to speak. The simple-minded monster was coaxed into joining their cause, and it has been nothing but destruction ever since. I, you know, I'm not even sure what to say about this one. It's, it's, monster, it, it, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I can't wait to see this match. It's a combination of well thought out cruelty versus just animalistic barbarian brutality. Last month in this building, he shocked a lot of spectators when he became the IWC Super Indy Champion, defeating John McChesney. Of course, that belt relinquished tonight for the tournament winner. But Loki making a major big time statement upon his return to IWC. From Brooklyn, New York, weighing at 190 pounds, he is the final reigning IWC Super Indy Champion, Loki! to find two harder hitting individuals in this world today than the Monster Abyss and the Rottweiler Loki. You got 6'8", 350 behind the power of Abyss and then you've got a lot of intensity packed inside the smaller frame of Loki. You can call it David versus Goliath, you can call it irresistible force versus immovable object. You can call it whatever you want, but this is historic. Joe Dombrowski alongside Jeff Gorman and Jay Worthington Farnsworth for the first ever meeting of the Monster Abyss and Low Key. This is so big, they're going to start calling irresistible force versus immovable object Abyss versus Low Key. These men have never squared off before, not really sure what to expect. Loki's got to hit quick and often with those feet in order to counteract the offensive abyss. And Loki gets to try to take, take those tree trunks of legs out from under him early, but Abyss just shoves him back with all that power. He can't get rid of Loki that quickly. Although he attempts one more time. Loki on the outside of the ring, but what about Shirley Doe, IWC champion, at ringside for this matchup, standing behind his charge, standing behind his pet monster? Well, like you said, Abyss is a simple-minded monster, so you have the mastermind of the Unholy Alliance guiding him out here. Abyss just got a military press. Wow. Loki over the... Loki lands on his feet. Abyss doesn't realize it. Charging with a kick. All oh, that force and impact behind that blow right to Oak. Looks like it caught him right in the elbow. Here he comes! In a spring with a forearm. Rocks the monster again. Low key, hitting quick, hitting often, hitting suddenly. That's what he needs to do. And it's great to see this in IWC. So many big stars in this promotion and on this show. But to have the first time ever meeting between these two, such a huge contrast. But yet they're the same in many ways because they're such hard hitters. Low key and Abyss, this could be something special. Low key is wearing away at the lower anatomy of Abyss, trying to take care of the height advantage. Trying to take care of the vertical base and already low key with stiff Kawada kicks right to the forehead of the monster. Abyss is trying to block him, but some of those are hitting. Quite a few are indeed. Abyss staggering back up to his feet and beats low key with a boom. Why use finesse when you have sheer raw strength, sheer raw size? Abyss used to having a size advantage here. That big boot just came out of nowhere. The perfect counter. 
the rapid fire offense of low key thus far, and Abyss has got to slow this matchup down. That's right, that's exactly what he has to do. Loki's so explosive, one of the most explosive wrestlers you'll ever see. Loki's just got to get on him and stay on him. Even if he has to make it slow, that's going to be Abyss's style. Abyss just hammering away in the corner. Hard right hands to the top of the head. Abyss over top of low key. No leverage for Key at all as he's now choked blatantly in that corner. And we know Loki is so tough he can withstand all this. Oh, no. Look at Doe. Hasn't Doe done enough well, Loki, damage? Loki just shoved Shirley Doe away violently. He was ready for Shirley Doe's involvement. We, you know, we saw last month that stare down between Loki and the monster Abyss. Obviously, Loki, he knows what Shirley Doe's all about as well. Next with kicks and now those vicious chops again. Farnsworth, you were there as I was. We've seen Loki leave red welts, handprints on other people's chests from those chops. Yeah, handprints, welts, lacerations, la lasting scars on people's right. chests. Those chops can split skin very easily. These guys can leave lasting scars on people's careers and now we're seeing them against each other. Abyss has one advantage in that he does wear a top to the ring, so it's not contact of flesh on flesh. He has a little bit of barrier there. It's able to shield some of the impact, but certainly nowhere near enough. As Loki, down on all fours, not a spot you see him very often, trying to battle back to his feet. Loki, caught to the, to the bread basket, but Abyss cuts him off right away. And I'm not very happy with the fact that Shirley Doe is here, considering all the all the uh, havoc that he's been wreaking. And I'd really like to see this one-on-one. -on -one. I hope Doe doesn't interfere anymore. Well, Abyss get a charge here into the corner. Loki out of the way. Abyss trying to stop his momentum. Still hits that corner. Let me put it like this. Abyss elevates an overhead northern light suplex. Got a move you see from Abyss very often, but he just powered him over his head. He just showed up Claudio Castagnoli by tossing a guy even higher. Right you are. Abyss, you can see the wars he's been through. You can see the scars on his arms. Barbed wire matches in the past, hardcore matches in the past. Abyss no stranger to pain, but certainly Loki isn't either. This matchup could come down to which one of these two has the higher pain threshold, which is a very good question, gentlemen. Abyss just huge in there, and he, again, like, he knows how to use it, and as much as I hate to say it, Doe is doing a very good job at recruiting members for this alliance. They're getting to be very, very dangerous. The four we saw before, plus Abyss, Go I think we might again. be in trouble. Once again, choking Loki over that ring cable. He was just checking to see if he was okay. Oh, well, he's certainly not after that interference. Monster Abyss diverting referee Stephen Coulter. And Abyss is just taking his time. He's not getting winded. He knows this could be a long match, and he's just trying to keep Loki down and just pick his spot. Surely, though, trying to go three for three here at Super Indy, the uh, most watched event in the IWC calendar year, as we mentioned. He's won one, he's got two to go, including this matchup. Wants to make a clean sweep for the Unholy Alliance, but it's going to be a very, very tough test. Shoulder blocks to the small on the back now of Loki. And Loki's a professional. He's been in there with just about everybody, both here and in Japan. So even when he gets in trouble, Loki is never really out of a match. He fires back, but once again, that clubbing shot right to the small of the back again neutralizes Loki. And Lo but Loki's offense is the type of offense that brings him back into it almost immediately. He doesn't just throw a punch, he takes your head off. Oh. Knife edge. Like getting hit with a skillet. Right you are. And I can't remember uh, the last time Loki has been in the rim with somebody this big. You gotta wonder if he's, if he's used to being at odds like this. I love you. Yeah, this is really going to be a test for Loki. He's been in there against a lot of tough guys, but Abyss is something different. Big, hard hitting, and he just never stops coming at you. One more time with the knife edge chop. And Loki, he's been in the ring with the toughest in this business. You know what, if he's felt a chop quite like Abyss, Loki starts to fire back. 
And there's my point. Two chops. And Abyss is ready, is on rubber legs. Gonna go rapid fire now. Hammering away at the chest area of Abyss, trying to get himself back into this matchup. Back kick. Abyss elevates him and drops him. And just like that, Abyss can cut it off and it's right back in Abyss's corner again. Cover. Who? Loki kicks out what elevation on that one man flapjack. For a second, I okay. thought Abyss was going to be throwing low key right at us. I was a little worried. Yeah, I mean, that was almost a 3D move. He was coming right at us. I mean, I could take it, but it might hurt Joe here. He's serious. <laughs> Abyss has it measured in the corner. Maybe going in for He's the getting kill. Getting fired up. Better be going for that splash one more time. Loki, whether he knows it or not, sidestepped it. Now Abyss gonna go right into the shock treatment. That torture rack drop. Abyss utilizing that tunnel vision, going right to the next move. And key. Uh oh, he's out. out of it. Look out. Dragon clutch. Whoa. He's got the dragon clutch. And it doesn't matter that he's up off the ground. This move is taking its toll on the monster he's a got, bit. He's got that body such as we saw it earlier with Reyes and Shelly. Is Abyss going to tap out? I can't remember ever seeing it in the past. Well, he might fall down. That's a start. Loki doesn't have that dragon sleeper all the way, but you can see him bending and twisting at the head and neck of Abyss. Abyss is just too big to accurately get this move on, to effectively get it on. But Abyss can't get to the rope. Loki keeps pulling his body away. And finally, Key gets back into the bucket. Oh my gosh. What an unbelievable counter to the shock treatment. And now Loki trying to get his bearings once again. Abyss as well. This is good. Yeah, just stay here. That's Abyss firing away again, trying to keep the tempo slow. And it's, it's working for him. Abyss knows that he can just take it at his own pace, and he could put away Loki here. And then, like you said, the Unholy Alliance would really have things going their way. Shirley Doe trying to silence the Loki chance, but certainly Loki fighting for Team IWC. Look how Cartwheel kick off the second row. The tidal wave kick. Loki. He's taking a lot of punishment. Loki's having a hard time getting up. An amazing offense. And that could be the turning point in the matchup. Loki needs to get his bearings here. This is his best shot. Well, Loki has commanded respect here in the IWC ever since his very first performance. He got the crowd on his side in just one match, and the fans are getting behind him now because they know that this guy is a world-class player. There's those hard knife edges once again. Abyss representing the Unholy Alliance. Loki representing the IWC faithful and Norm Connor. As Loki fires away with those chops, gonna try to move the monster. Not a very wise move on the part of Loki. Abyss puts on the brake, stuck on the clothesline by Key. He caught him with that forearm and it knocked him down. He had a lot of momentum, Loki did. Down to his knees, but does not take Abyss completely out. Here we go, here come the kicks. Oh no, listen to this. No, oh, he Abyss. stopped it, look at that. Has him goozled. Abyss has him set up. Could be a power bomb attempt here. Can he get him up? No, Loki again elbows out of it. Shot to the top of the head. Loki on top. Double stomp. Drives all the air out of the monster. I tell you, every time Abyss goes for a big power move, Loki's able to fight his way out of it before Abyss can hit the move. The intensity in this matchup just continues to escalate. Low key. Here come the kicks again. Let's see if he can do it. Sets up one more time. You can hear that impact. Yeah, you did it. Straight to the pectoral muscles, straight to the upper body. One more. Wow. Straight to the temple. That's right. That was a big one. I think the weapon of mass destruction may have been defused. At least for now. But if you can knock Abyss down, how do you pin him? Can Loki get the cover? Three. No. Still, you know, Abyss kicks out. It's just a huge proposition to actually pin Abyss for a three count. Absolutely right. But Loki certainly faring better than most, if not all, of the previous athletes who tried have. Abyss so dominant in this business. But Loki is meeting him shot for shot here. And, oh, maybe ghetto stomp time. Um, we saw him in Super 84 in this. Abyss moves out of the way. The monster counters back to his feet. 
Here it comes again. He's gonna go for shock treatment, right? Yeah. He nails him. Bends the back of Loki with a shock treatment. That's beating a lot of guys. Cover, is it gonna be Loki? Three, no. Loki escapes, much to the dismay of our IWC champion, Shirley No. Loki's absorbed so much punishment. He's one of the toughest you'll find, but can even Loki withstand this kind of punishment? And Especially what, after that shock treatment. Once again, the question comes, who can withstand more pain? No, I'm not gonna touch Who that. has the higher pain threshold, Abyss or Loki? They are testing that right now. Abyss is getting ready for another rush here. Abyss gonna charge again. Again, Loki out of the way. Abyss lands very precariously. This could be Loki's opportunity. Look out! Drop kick to the back. Abyss vaulted into the turnbuckle. Nowhere for him to go. Loki knows how to hurt you. It took him a long time. He's oh weathered God. the storm, but he was able to hit that nice drop oh kick. Oh my God. Look oh. out! Tria won't get him stop. We start at Super Indy 4. Look out! He got it! He calls that woe is you! A finish gets wiped out! And got the fans it. come to their feet for that one! A ghetto stop in the tree of woe position on a guy that weighs 350 pounds. We saw him damn near kill John McKenzie with it last year, and Abyss has not moved. Abyss Shit. is laying there like a dead fly. Loki may have done the impossible. Let's see. I think Loki's knocked him out. I think low key, he's gonna get the win. For no! Hopes, but it was Doe who put it there. Surely Doe intervenes. This match would have been over. Get him down from there. I don't think Doe should even be here. I well, wanna see this one on one. Obviously, Loki had this matchup won. Doe interjecting himself. Oh, damn it. Jimmy Vegas. Oh, come on. Sebastian Dark. Look out. Dark. Oh. Set right into Vegas. Dark vaulted into Vegas, into the buckle. Loki, it's a strike. That's right, he's dropping my bowling pins, Joe. But Doe's in there, look out. That's how you take care of the Unholy Alliance, but watch out for Champion Doe. This is not no DQ. Loki, charge again to Doe. Oh! Black hole slam. Black hole. He got him. A fifth winter. Numbers game and Abyss was able to pin Loki for the second match in a row. It was a distraction involving somebody not even involved in the match. This time, Doe creates the diversion. Loki unknowingly runs right into the black hole slam. Somebody's got to do something about the unholy life, and I bet Barnsworth, I bet you just love it. All I'm saying is, these men were not given the respect they deserve. So they took it. I respect that. Well, very well. Be that as it may, the Unholy Alliance has got to be grinning ear to ear right now because on IWC's most important night of the year, Super 85, the Unholy Alliance is doing whatever the hell they want. They're 2 and 0 so far. There's a lot more action to go. I'm going to take this opportunity really quick to plug my book. It's called This Side of the Mic by Jeff Gorman about my career as a pro wrestling announcer and a lot of other fun stuff. You can get it at bn.com. That's Barnes Noble. BN.com, it's this side of the mic, and Grayson, I'm telling you, Daddy Kane, Jeff Gorman. Say it. That's right, Jeff Gorman. Just type it into BN.com, it'll pop right up. Thank you. But well, listen to the crowd go nuts for Abyss, an outstanding performance, even though he lost. Certainly that matchup deserving of a standing ovation from this capacity crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's hear it, he's still your Super Indie Champion, Loki! About another hour or so, Loki the Super Indie Champion, indeed. I'll tell you what, Loki and Abyss, a hard-fought match, the Unholy Lions, however, 2-0, but could Loki and Abyss meet again in the future?